If you're even mildly acquainted with Indian history, you've surely heard of Raja Man Singh. And you've probably got a negative impression of him from what you've heard. In the popular narrative, Man Singh is remembered as a vassal of Akbar, who was sent by the Mughal emperor for a dialogue with Maharana Pratap of Mewar. We are told that Maharana Pratap refused to dine with him for he considered Man Singh to be an outcast for siding with the Mughals. This is completely untrue as attested by prominent historians like Sir Jadunath Sarkar, Dr. Raghubir Singh and Dr. Gopinath Sharma. And this myth is not the only piece of information about Raja Man Singh that is uncritically accepted by the masses. In this video, we will throw some light on Man Singh's life, character and the several moral dilemmas he negotiated to fulfill his destiny as a brilliant Kshatriya ruler whose role in protecting Hindu dharma in those dark times is indeed unparalleled. Raja Man Singh was born into the Kachwaha Rajput dynasty that traces its origin to the Ikshvaku clan of Lord Ram. Dhola, Sodi Dev and Raja Pajwan were some of the earlier kings of this illustrious lineage. In 1562, Muhammad Sharifuddin Hussain, the Mughal governor of Mewat, attacked Amir. Man Singh's grandfather, the then ruler of Amir, Raja Bharmal, was in no position to resist the mighty Mughal army. Fearing an unleashing of terror on the people of Amir by the Mughal forces, Bharmal entered into an alliance with Akbar. Consequent to this, Akbar ordered Sharifuddin to return the war booty and hostages and leave the kingdom of Amir. The treaty also resulted in the forbidding of enslavement of war captives and abolition of jizya in the following years. Given the tyrannical rule of Islam that prevailed over much of North India at that time, these were small gains that offered some relief to the Hindus. This event was the genesis of Man Singh's long association with the Mughals. Following the treaty with Akbar, Raja Bharmal's eldest son Bhagwant Das and grandson Man Singh were given high offices in the Mughal court. Raja Man Singh went on to become Akbar's most trusted grandee and one of the most powerful people of the Mughal Empire. One propaganda that is used to tarnish the legacy of Man Singh is that he was a slave of the Mughals who attacked and conquered Hindu kingdoms for them. But in the eagerness to vilify Man Singh, what is conveniently overlooked is the perilous position that the kingdom of Amir was placed in at that time. Unlike kingdoms like Mewad, which had the mighty Aravali range as a natural defense, Amir was right next door to the Mughal epicenters of Delhi and Agra, with no natural barriers to protect it. Given the precarious position of his kingdom, Amir, and the lack of political stability and able leadership among the Hindu kingdoms, Man Singh sided with the Mughals to protect his kingdom and its people from the barbarity of Mughal and other Muslim rulers. But there is no doubt that he continued to be a devout Hindu with unwavering faith in his religion. This is amply demonstrated by the fact that he emphatically turned down Akbar's offer to convert to his newly founded religion, Deen-e-Lahi. In 1568, Akbar conquered Mewar's Chittor. The Mughal conquest of Chittor was a bloody affair with the barbaric slaughter of 30,000 commoners on the orders of Akbar. Despite this, Akbar could not annex the whole of Mewar. In a bid to bring Mewar under the Mughal Empire, Akbar sent Man Singh for talks with Maharana Pratap, the ruler of Mewar. The mythical narrative of the spurning of Man Singh by Maharana Pratap is set in this context. Of course, Maharana Pratap could not be swayed and what ensued was the Battle of Haldighati. In the Battle of Haldighati on 18th June 1576, the Mughal army under Man Singh defeated Mewar's forces under Maharana Pratap. Maharana's commanders convinced him to leave the field so that he could carry on the fight against the Mughals. What is noteworthy here is that Man Singh and the Mughal army did not pursue either the retreating Mewar army or the fleeing Maharana Pratap. The fact that Man Singh let Maharana flee while being engaged in a military contest with him can only be explained as tacit support for a Hindu king for whom Man Singh is said to have had high personal regard. Maharana continued his resistance against the Mughals using guerrilla warfare and eventually regained much of his kingdom from them. 
After winning the Battle of Haldi Ghati, Man Singh prevented a repeat of 1568 Chittor by forbidding loot and plunder of Mewar by the Mughal forces. Akbar Nama mentions Akbar's displeasure at this conduct of Man Singh. Man Singh was banished from the Mughal court for some time and both he and his father had to forfeit the honours accorded to them in the Mughal court. Later in 1581 and 1586, the Mughals entrusted Man Singh with the onerous task of quelling the proud and relentless Afghan tribes in the northwestern and eastern parts of India. His triumphs in these war campaigns are testimony to his unparalleled military brilliance. He not only successfully suppressed the resistance of the obstinate Pashtuns, but also secured the narrow passes of the Northwest, thus safeguarding India from foreign incursions. In 1589, Man Singh became king when his father Bhagwant Das passed away. The Afghan rule in Bihar, Bengal and Orissa was one of the darkest periods of Hindu history. Man Singh defeated and subdued the Afghans and freed the Hindus and their temples from the oppressive clutches of Muslim rule. While Man Singh's military accomplishments are acknowledged by many, his extensive contributions to the Hindu cultural milieu of the time are hardly known. Man Singh was a true dharmika. He was devoted to his family deity and was known to be a stickler for religious rituals and traditions. Despite his constant engagement in military pursuits, Man Singh carried out the construction and rebuilding of numerous temples across India. The Govinda Deva Temple at Rindavan, the Jagat Shiromani Temple of Amber, and a beautiful temple in Varanasi are shining examples of the architectural brilliance of temples built by Man Singh. In addition to this, he carried out repair and renovation of numerous temples across the subcontinent of Bharat. He wrested the temple of Jagannath at Puri from the Afghans and entrusted the administration of the temple to the Raja of Khurda. To this day, the descendants of Raja of Khurda are known as Rajas of Puri. It was Man Singh who patronized perhaps the greatest and the noblest of saints in medieval history, the author of the holy Ramcharitmanas, Tulsi Das. Every person reading Ramcharitmanas is ever indebted to Raja Man Singh. Man Singh was also a great patron of art and learning. He encouraged many renowned poets and artists of the time by giving out handsome rewards. He was himself a man of great learning and was held in high esteem by his contemporaries. Man Singh was a visionary leader whose service to Hindu dharma and Indian culture and heritage are unmatched by any other leader of his times. Despite being in the Mughal court and fighting for the Mughal empire, he undertook determined action to ensure the safeguarding of Hindu interests. He navigated the fragile political landscape of the time with tact, keeping in mind the best interests of his people and that of Hindu dharma. Given the geographical and strategic vulnerability of his kingdom and the limited choices he was faced with, he upheld and protected dharma in his own unique way. It is time Hindus recognized the extraordinary contributions made by this peerless warrior of dharma.